That's why they call it Liquid Death. What's going on, everybody? This is the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for cover band musicians and band leaders to learn how to rock more and suck less. In Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Adam Johnson. In Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. And we are once again live streaming this on all of the things. This is, since we started, this is actually the first time we've actually done it on the night that we normally record. Right. Which is even funnier. But we're trying to get some sort of like standing sketch yeah. set up so that if people want to watch this stuff. Yeah. They can. And then the beauty is you can uh, catch it in a bunch of different media, right? You can see it in YouTube, all cut up and clean. You can see it here in its raw native format, which is <laughs> a little little ragged sometimes, but we, we, we yeah. get it through. You can hear it in audio. You can hear it cut up in little bits on social media that Adam does a good job, like finding the nuggets. So we're producing a lot of content out of a 45-minute conversation. Yes, we're, we're doing the thing that like all of the gurus say you should be doing. This is called parent content. Parent content. Because long form can be cut up and all that jazz. And like I'm it. the one just there just cutting it up. Well, how's it going, man? You know, real good. We had a rehearsal today. Um, no Taylor. It was just uh, Charlie, Ben, and me. And um, we are looking uh, sort of realistically at putting on the 80s show. And it's a change of tone. It's a change of um, we're going to step up the lighting. I've got some stuff in some shopping carts about that. Um, nice. I did just update the Meister DMX today. Just there that is. 1.3. 1.3. And it's going to be costumes, outfits. I have my Miami Vice white linen suit ready to go. I am think I'm, think I'm putting Taylor in like a neon tracksuit, something. Yep. She thinks she'll have a choice in that, but I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her what it should be. Um, eh. And so this was the first rehearsal that was one of those great like exploring ideas, kind of, hey, we should do da-da-da kind of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And playing with some of the tracks that have been putting together for various tunes and um some of those went super great. Some of them were really rough. What do you think of um, talking in your sleep? I've done it in multiple groups, and it's a first setter yeah. if you're doing it. Kind of a thinker. It's kind of like a second song. Hmm. You know, within maybe like that first block of five. Yeah. You're yeah. Warm a crowd up. Yeah. People recognize it's it, but it's it's not a it's not a banger exactly. Um, it's fun to play. It's fun to play. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 way that the the lines interact in that one du, du, yeah. dum, bling, bling, bling. it's like I, it, yeah it's really just a double stops for me yeah no i love them yeah so we're just singing it now so we tried yeah. that one and a bunch of others and i have a lot of track work to do a lot and so that's fine i've, I've got a pretty good workflow going for it and um i'm turning them around I also do have access to, I think, your folders, and I believe also Moskowitz's, just <laughs> yep. as, a, as a side, and I've been offered the use of them, so appreciate that very much. It's a privileged position. So, yeah, that's exciting, getting that together. Our, of course, our next gig is in July, and that's the new Strange, so it's more um, broader, broader focus, and um, yeah, going to take... Uh, certainly, anything we put together for the 80s band would be fair game for of course. Uh, the new Strange, but um, yeah, it's fun to have a new project going on, so I've started to... Um, work a little bit on the graphic design language for it, picking fonts and backgrounds and whatnot. So yeah, the thing that immediately jumped out at me was the, when you start like an eras band, you end up with like this drawer or this container in your closet of like dress up clothes. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. When you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a costume closet. It absolutely is. hundred yeah. uh, percent. But it's funny. You mentioned the production escalation because this week i got a chance to talk with the ceo of the people who make maestro dmx and man they've got a lot of really cool they had a lot of cool stuff to talk about and i'm going to start working through the review process because i'm going to make sure that you guys have the best information that you can possibly have but i'll go ahead and let it slip we've got a 10 percent discount on the maestro dmx at the moment baby and so if you go to their website and use the promo code discount for the number four CBC, you can get 75 bucks off that sucker. That's a deal. man. And it's crazy. I'm also going to put that code into the live stream. So if anybody wants to get on that, they can save 75 bucks, get the Maestro DMX for $675, which is less than 750 what it yeah. normally re retails yeah. for so yeah and i think when, when your review comes out i think a lot of people will be inspired by what it can do it's it's a pretty impressive piece of kit it really is yep and getting the chance to talk with their development team and looking at their roadmap there's a lot of really cool stuff that's coming down the pipeline that awesome. i'm 
awesome. Really excited to talk about for lots of other things. We will get into that. Probably we'll make a note for that. We'll tell you about it in the um the post show yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. Exciting things. Speaking of exciting things, let's go to reviews. Okay. This one was on Spotify. Once again, you can leave your comments on any of our episodes when you're tuning in through Spotify. This is from Adam Martin. And this was on the one thing you should never do as a kicking musician episode. And he goes, okay, I totally was born in Guntersville, Alabama. For those of you who are keeping track at home, that was where my throw and go wedding gig was located. He said, I think we moved to Birmingham when I was like two months old. Thanks for giving me a way to work in the podcast to a conversation with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for sharing. That's a fantastic little anecdote. Awesome. If you If you want to tell us how you brought us up to your mom leave a review and we'll we'll talk about it then yeah okay I didn't, I, that was a hard one to tie together I yeah, no that. listen i think you landed the segue i like it very much i'm very professional yeah deeply okay so let's get into this week's main topic and if you're tuning into the live stream you already know it because i put it as the uh, tagline of the stream itself but this was an email that came in this weekend and I'm not going to mention any of the pertinent details because this person is asking a question in confidence. It was cool to find out that they found the podcast through YouTube. I think a lot of the times we feel like it's hard to find us anywhere, yeah. but they've been tuning in uh, on, on YouTube. So big thanks to them. And they'll know who they are For sure. when we start reading yeah. through it and yeah. we'll keep it as vague as we can. But this was just one of those topics that was too good to not dig into on the show for sure no the the heavens opened and the content gods rained it down upon us no question about it 100 percent. here we go this says i've been watching your youtube podcast for a few months decided to reach out to ask advice on the thoughts in my head so this is a thing that i mean musicians and rumination i think that's like all we do is we ruminate <laughs> and we play music and we think yeah i joined this brand new country cover band as lead guitarist the first few rehearsals and shows were great as we were rehearsing songs i grew up listening to country prior to 2000 in this case. That's kind of the lane that they were in. However, within six months, the lead singer has taken over and decided to start incorporating hard rock songs, 70s R&B, funk, and songs that are outside the purview or the scope of what I thought I was signing up for. I specifically waited out the pandemic to join a new country band. It said that in air quotations. Yep. And this is another thing that I, I can tell that they've been consuming our stuff because this next <laughs> paragraph is totally yeah. stuff that we've said before. Yeah. I know that stretching my limits can help me as a player, which I've said a thousand we've said times, that, yes. <laughs> but I didn't sign up to play Journey or Tom Petty. And while they may have good songs, I don't want to play them. Nearly half of our set lists are songs that I have no passion for and just go through the motions. I have previously expressed this. And while they give me a chance to voice my concern, my opinions are always poo-pooed by the singer turned band leader. I feel like a hired hand and not a band. I don't like the way our shows are put together. There's some more specific details around the person that they are kind of having issues with. Right. So we'll just keep it vague at this point. But the main thrust of it is it's clear that this band is not aligning with what I expected. Yep. I feel as if I should bow out gracefully after the summer season is over. Any advice on how I can avoid doing this again in the future? Thank you for your wonderful podcast and thanks for your time. Yeah, man, what a great question. There's so much going on in there. <laughs> so, and, so many parts to respond to. So yeah, I sent this to Dan a couple of days ago, but I was like, save it for the, for the show. Gold we haven't mine. even, we have not discussed we, this. No, no. We're, yeah. We're coming in cold in our various opinions. Although I feel we'll probably align pretty close. Well, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I feel a couple of ways about it. Now, the deal is he joined a group under false pretenses and maybe they weren't necessarily false in the moment but they weren't adhered to so i think that's a fair critique and i also know that country guitar playing is a very specific skill for sure and if you are very adept at that particular style you want to be able to do that kind of stuff so i i get that for sure so I understand the frustration and, you know, talking about somebody taking over and feels just like things weren't communicated very well up front, which is something that we've harped on incessantly. You got to set expectations ahead of time. 
Otherwise, it can get really messy. Case in point. The thing that causes band tension is misalignment of expectations. Yep. All right. And, and I say that as someone who has, in a band in the past, put a spin on things, pushed the band in directions that were not what the intention was, and caused friction. I have done that. Yeah. All right. So I'm speaking here as the the bad guy in this story. I've been that guy. And um, it was with good intentions. The intention was that we would be more marketable, more buyable, more attractive on the stage. But that wasn't what the guy who put the band together wanted to do. And so when I realized that I was the problem, I stood down from my changes I was trying to make. And it was not very long after that that I started my own project to do my own things. And it's, and it's right. not a coincidence. I, I did believe in what I was trying to impart into that group, but mm -hmm. um, the way that I was steamrolling it wasn't working and was causing a lot of friction. And so I learned a lot. I learned a lot in that. So the thing is, if the band had aligned intentions at the beginning and somebody is shifting that, that's a, that's a thing you can call out and you should. You say, look, sure. we started to be this thing and now there's this pressure to have it be something else. And I mean, essentially, you know, what this listener has laid out is the, the, the complaint. Like I, I thought I was here for one thing. Now we're doing something else. I feel like that's not something we talked about or something I agreed to. And, and we should have that conversation. But I, I hear this a lot out there in the cover band, social media world of like, I have an expectation of what a band is. A band should be collaborative. It should be a democracy. It should be a family, all that kind of stuff, which in my view is mostly nonsense. What it should be is a business of aligned participants who are aligned, not just on what the creative effort is, but the business structure of it. You know, mm -hmm. my bandmates are real clear that I'm the band leader and we've made that really clear and I, and I've made it really clear. I want their input. I'm not going to be a dictator about things when there's a decision to be made. I'll make it, but I'll make it informed by their thoughts and I'll try to give them wins when I can, you know, that's how you be a good leader. A anyway, the point is if the expectations have been changing in an unspoken kind of way, the thing to do is to speak it and to have that yep. conversation and it won't be comfortable. It might not be comfortable, but to say like, look, I was here for one thing. We're doing something else and I, I'm not loving it. Which it seems like that's what he's doing. Well, to us, I'm not sure he's done it to the band. Well, he said he's voiced his concerns, but. And they've been poo-pooed. The that's right. Singer kind of, yeah. That's right. That's right. So, All right. Well, yeah. To, so there you go. I mean, uh, either after hearing what we have to say about this, the, this person would say like, wow, well, I haven't really put it in terms of this was my expectation. This is the yeah. reality. We really need to talk about this. I've just kind of been nitpicking at some decisions I didn't like, which is by the way, not a great way to do it. It's really easy to just dismiss each of those one, one by one. And then you feel deeply unheard versus yep. like sitting down and have a meeting and saying, look, I, I'm not happy with how things are going. That demands a response that takes it seriously. Yep. Right. And so I think, I think one thing to say to this person is, you know, you, you probably, I don't know, probably it's possible. You have not been voicing your concerns in a way that makes people take them seriously. Yeah. Or the, what, what seems very clear to you may not be clear to other people. Right. Again, we, yeah. we get into this whole band dynamic thing and it is just relationship stuff and people have different communication styles. And when you say something, it may be perceived as something else to another person right. and nobody has any ill will or bad faith approaches to those kinds of things. Yeah. So you just kind of have to figure out, is this something that I'm not articulating well enough or now there's another part of this. I want to circle back to. There's so many parts to this. It's great. It's yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. The other part that I was talking through is the, can you make yourself enjoy these songs? Right. Can the fact that other people are enjoying them yes. be the thing that works for you? Right. And it's something we've also, you know, we've talked about a fair amount because it's pretty easy to get jaded on the same material over and over again. But like, if you're just kind of complaining, like you don't dig the songs, and then you kind of like show that on stage, right? That can contribute to another issue. Yes, yeah. If you're telegraphing which kind of comes around to the yeah. last part, if you're telegraphing your distaste for these so songs on stage, that's that's bad. That's unprofessionalism on you, frankly. Yeah. You know, listen. I, we do. I can't begin to tell you how much I loathe the song "What's Up" by Four Non Blondes. Really hate that song. I really hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. But do, you, I, do you like it? I know I hate it, but okay. but what it does in a room, I love. 
Mm -hmm. And so I play it and I lean into it and you would never know I hate it. You'd never know that. I'm as engaged in that song as something that, you know, I loved since I was 12. I, I, because of what it does in the room and what happens in the audience and the energy I get back from them, that's worth it for me to play that song. And you got to find your, you, I'm sorry, you don't gotta, I'm correcting myself a lot in this podcast, which is a good thing. It is possible to find a way to play and love a song you hate, and it's by finding your joy in other people's joy. Mm -hmm. And I think being a musician who performs is, I think that's a necessary approach for a performer. Like I really, the, I mean, even the originals guys who do the same show four nights a week, five nights a week out on the road, it's a pain in the ass yeah. and they're doing it. It's the way the crowd responds. That's why I'm there. I, that, that, that energy when my hit starts and they hear it and they love it and they're giving it back to me, that feeds me. That's, that's why, that's why I'm there. Right. So if you can find that with those songs that you hate, don't care about, you know, you start Mary Jane's last dance and a certain cohort of the room is going to lose their minds because they love that song. Yeah. I don't care how you feel about Tom Petty. Find yourself in yeah. that reaction. Sure. That's my advice about that. Yeah. So the, the other thing that isn't immediately clear is what band leader entails. Yeah. You know, because in our world, we kind of talk about the band leader component because we're the decision makers but the thing that really it boils down to is we're also the ones who are funding the project yeah so if we're talking about power dynamics there are ways <laughs> to, to move those in a particular direction yeah you just have to be willing to take on the things that that person is currently doing and they are probably doing those things because nobody else was doing them and they they needed to get done. So usually the person who's putting in the most amount of work gets the most say. Yeah. And so there might be some things that could be taken off of that person's plate. If you offer it again with, with good intent, you know, not, Hey, you suck at this. Let me do it, but find a, a way of making it, you know, beneficial to both of you. Yeah. But the, the real thing that like you got to figure out is should you quit? Yeah. Yeah. And and he was saying yeah. like you know should I write it out till the end of the summer? And I don't I don't think I mean look that's got... a, I think that's a very generous and professional way as long as you aren't telegraphing your displeasure on stage. I think that's really generous. I that's one hundred percent my point though. Yeah. Because if you're like I'll stay through the summer, but then you spend the next three months being an absolute ball ache because you don't want to right. be there. Yeah, or an energy suck on stage. Yeah. You're not doing anybody any favors. Definitely. So definitely it would be more beneficial for you to find a replacement and just go on yeah. than to sit there and just kind of sandbag their gigs for the rest of the summer. Yeah. I also hear people who, again, are down that rabbit hole of a band as a family that like, I can't quit this band because they're my friends and I wouldn't do that. I can't hurt them. Better to rip the bandit off, frankly, you know? Well, it, it, cause again, you're not doing them any favors. Right. Like yeah. if, if you suck to be around, yeah, you're making everything about the experience worse yeah yeah for if, everybody including if, you yeah if you think that anyone's unclear that you're unhappy think again you've you've made that clear so that is putting a spin and a color on the decisions they make you know i'm gonna you know we want to do this but i uh, have to talk to that guy about it that's putting friction in the space of what this band wants to become yeah and so you know yeah is hey i'll get you through the gigs we have booked right now and i'll help you find somebody else like that's that's generous. That's more generous yeah. than anyone who's left a band I've been in <laughs> has ever been, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you, but if you rolled in with like a replacement and be like, this guy's got you from this yeah. date on, so long. like that would be the best thing that you could do. Yeah. But don't necessarily think that sticking it out is, is the right move because you're under just throwing it out there. You're under zero obligation to do anything you don't want to do ever. hundred percent. There's no contract here. This is a, a, a verbal agreement at best for most bands yeah so you could just be like this is not my thing anymore i'm not showing up anymore bye, bye. like then, you're now, totally now, within then, your right yeah, to do that you can totally do it now then then you are the guy who did that you're gonna have to deal sure. with the consequences of having done that reputationally but there's nothing stopping you from doing it so th this is exactly what we've we've determined you can go i'm out bye or you can 
find your replacement and set the date quickly. Yep. And there's just a, a spectrum of things in the middle. <laughs> That's right. And whatever you pick, it doesn't really matter because somebody's going to be upset and you could do all the right things. They could still slag you. So and six months, everyone will have forgotten about it. So yeah. Yeah. Go out on your own terms yep. is what I would say. Yep. Yep. Now the most salient piece of this whole email is the last sentence. Any advice on how I can avoid doing this again in the future? The thing that they have to avoid doing is the first thing that we talked about. Right. You got to make sure that your expectations are met up front. That's right. And that your desires are expressed up front. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all got to get in this kind of mutual agreement situation. That's a totally valid thing to say. Look, I'm a country guitar player. I only want to play country. I don't want to expand into other stuff. Valid. Mm -hmm. Totally valid. And there's a market for that. It's that. That won't be a sales limiting move. There's a market for that. Well, it, I wouldn't go that far because you are limiting yourself if, if you just want to play country because you're going in and you're saying, this is all I want to do. I was yeah. like, all right, well, if a band has any sort of aspirations to go beyond that, then you're not a good fit for them. So yeah. you are kind of like in that little corner. That's and if true. that's the corner you want to be in, knock yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but the thing is, it I, is going to limit you. I'm pretty sure you could staff a whole band of people who have those same limits and want to stay in that same lane. And, oh, and yeah, then for sure. there's plenty of sales opportunities for gigs that are just that, you know, you could have a perfectly fine weekend warrior career doing just that. And as long as everybody's aligned and everyone's clear, that's what we're doing. Like that could be a great, that could be a great gig. It's about clarity. So in conclusion. Yeah. It's about clarity. It's about communication. It's about being honest. Yeah. And I think there's just a lot of folks that are afraid of being honest because they're worried they're going to hurt somebody's feelings. But like any time that I have had to go back and apologize or figure out how, like I, it would have been so much less trouble yeah. to just say what I wanted in the first place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you end up hurting I, yourself, but way more. Yeah, and I think there's also this whole world of assumptions around. Oh, we're going to be a country band, like okay, but what does that mean? I'm I'm not interested in modern country. I think it's crap. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, let's have that talk. It's going to be you know two thousand and earlier. Oh, great, perfect. That's my exactly my wheelhouse. Fine, good. Because there's this line in this email that we're referring to that it's end of the second paragraph. Though I feel like a hired hand and not a band in quote marks band. So there's like all this meaning there implicit in what band yeah. means, right? And you can just hear this person's thinking, uh, that means I should be of equal voice in a democracy. It means that my opinion has as much weight as everybody else who may or may not be contributing the same as me. There's like a lot of pressure on that word band. It's carrying a lot of weight in that sentence. Yeah. And um, the reality is, what if you were a hired hand? There are plenty of people who have a great time being a hired hand. You know, people in my band, I think they, I think they think of themselves as more than hired hands. I want them to, but they know they're not the one making the final decision. I'm pushing us into this eighties thing and they're all in. They're fine. Yeah. This is the gig. Like they don't want to be on the, on the hook to make those decisions or make the investments I'm making or spend the time I'm making to do the graphic design work and make a website and all this stuff. Right. They, they don't want, they just want to play the music and I'm yeah. providing them a context and a framework to do that. But it's not the way that I suspect this writer is saying when he puts band in double quotes like that. Yep. Yeah. Well, and and that's the other thing that we were kind of mentioning is that like, well, if you don't want other people making decisions for you, then guess what? You're the band leader now. Start your own. Yeah. And you, yeah, it's time for you to do your own thing. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't going to do that. Right. They'd right. much rather just be kind of kind of annoyed. Yeah. But yeah. have somebody else yeah. just tell them when to show up. Exactly. That's that's the other thing is that like be careful what you wish for. Right. Because everybody wants to be in charge until it's time to like do all the stuff. Yeah. And yeah, that's no, that's kind of how I feel. Everyone wants to be in charge until it's time to fire the bassist. Yeah. And that's a hard conversation that most people are going to shy away from. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to kind of look at it from from all angles, but. To me, if if this listener is not up for that particular thing, the way that they avoid this in the future is they they put it all out. And I, honestly, I would suggest you put it in writing. Mm, that's a good idea. So like sit there, give yourself 10 minutes and be like, this is the perfect gig for me. And it's like, we play this kind of music. We have this kind of setup. We play this many times a month. We play at these kinds of venues. Yep. 
I get to do X, Y, and Z, and the lead singer is in charge of da 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 da, and like drill down, yeah. like yeah. get into the nitty gritty of it, including hey, and then, here are things that I've had happen in the past that didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Lay it all out, lay it out. You know, the, you know, go ahead and detail the whole problem with this band and every other one in the past, all of that. Well, and you know, when we're talking about how gigs work and like what makes a gig acceptable you know maybe weigh the things that are bugging you against all of the other things because song selection is like this much of a right the experience of being in a band yeah so you could you could find yourself in a band that plays exactly what you want to play but everything else about it is totally miserable right, right. so yeah. you know look through the yeah. is it convenient does it pay well is it going to be fun do I like the people I work with? If you get two, three out of four, like that's probably your best case scenario. I don't know a single person, including all of the band leaders that are in the Patreon community and all that, that are 100% in love right. with everything about their project. For sure, for sure. So don't kid yourself into thinking that the grass is greener just because you wouldn't have to play Don't Stop Believing." that you know, you're gonna find a, a better option than what you have right now yeah so be really honest with yourself and just do a little bit of self-reflection and what have you to kind of figure out what what you're willing to live with yeah yeah and bear in mind you know factor in that um as much as you hate don't stop believing it's over in four minutes yeah it's four minutes of your life and and watch what the audience does during those four minutes yeah like is there anything for me artistically in playing we got the beat no no does every lady over 45 in our crowd lose their ever loving mind the second we start playing it 100 percent. and that is the fun part that's the fun part yeah. i can i can do the little guitar stabs you know as we're doing the thing I, I'll, I'll do the choreography it's worth it yeah everything else is about it is is uh is rad so I'll take the good with the bat. I think that um, this uh, listener might not have gotten quite the answer they were hoping for, but I, well, hope it, I, I hope it was the answer they needed. Yeah. So our in summation, quit, quit. and leave as soon as possible yep. because it, this isn't working for you and you staying longer isn't working for them. If I possible. It. Yeah. If possible, don't leave a mess, but do leave. And if you don't want this to happen again in the future, do some work, put some stuff on paper and really figure it out what it is what, that you want. Yeah. And honestly, maybe do the second part first before you do the part about leaving. Mm. Because you may find that you write all the stuff out that works and you know they check 80% of the boxes. Right. And then you kind of look around at your market and who's available and what is out there. And maybe you decide, eh, maybe yeah. I should just- Maybe four get... minutes of journey isn't worth all of this agony. Yeah, because let me tell you, uh, starting your own project is <laughs> it's a lot. agony. Yeah. That's a great way. To, that's a great word. There you go. I mean, it's worth it, but it's, <laughs> it's still not great sometimes. Yeah. Still, even when things are going well, I think we nailed it. I think we, I think we like, I'm very happy with the responses to this. Yeah. We over answered. Yeah. We gave them so many things. So many things. And hopefully everyone else too. Uh, Joe on the live stream, literally as we were like reading the first sentence, he's like, he needs to quit. So I do want to call out Joe because job, he was Joe. right. And I sat on it because I knew that, you know, it, <laughs> uh, I knew it was coming. That's where we were landing. So why, why, uh, yeah, why shortcut the journey? And, yeah. And Tony also in live stream said, finding a re replacement before you leave is a huge favor. We huge. totally agree. Huge. Yeah. Any other parting words or wisdom? No, you know, as somebody who's quit some bands, um, <laughs> you you just got to tear off the Band-Aid and it feels bad. It feels like you're being unfaithful or a traitor or a, I don't know what. Especially I was leaving one band to start one that I knew would compete against the one I was leaving and I knew would beat it in the market. And I had feelings about that. I liked those guys. They were friends. They're still friends. It took us a minute to get back to friends. but Sure. But we're friends again now. And, you know, if you take a long enough view of things – all of this drama is very short term. Mm -hmm. So do what you got to do. Take care of yourself. Set yourself up to win. Uh, that's my advice. Yeah. I concur. So best of luck to our uh, our listener out there. And um, maybe at some point you can 
touch back with us after this is all kind of settled and see how yeah. see what you landed on love to hear love to hear an update that'd be great for sure all right folks i think that's going to do it for uh for this week it's a, a short one and i mean we went in we we nailed it yeah so don't forget to check out the maestro dmx discount all kinds of fun stuff coming down the pike and uh we'll just go ahead and leave it at that in Atlanta, georgia i'm adam johnson in greensboro north carolina i'm dan ray You've been listening to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast for the week of May 24th, 2024.